Good morning, it's quarter to eight. We're both awake. How did you sleep, Dawn? Fine. Dawn slept fine. Like a dead person. Like a dead person. <laughs> um, I slept okay. It was. I did get some sleep, definitely, but I was on and off, sort of turning over, and my mat was sliding down again that way. My mat actually went down at one point, so I had to blow it back up. I don't know what that was about. Um, it's fine now, so maybe I hadn't sealed it properly, who knows, but yeah, I've never really had any problems with climate before, apart from when I got that leak in, in the other one that I exchanged. Yeah, I think we were just both so tired that we just slept. I think we were asleep by about 11pm, so we got about, I think, 7 hours sleep, something like that, which isn't too bad. Mine was a bit broken. Um, it was really hot in the tent at one point, so we had to open the doors. The tent was good, it is a bit cramped, like, uh, I think Dawn can sit up in it, I think I can sit up in it, space like width wise, is just about enough space for two people, like, it is really cramped, like every time I rolled over I was like, getting Dawn in, like hitting Dawn in the face with my elbow, it's not ideal in that sense, but we're picking a tent for this trip because it's it's lightweight and it's compact and we can split it between the two of us and it's relatively low profile and stealthy we don't need a big luxurious tent so it is what it is you know it's fine it tapers to one end so your mats are always going to cross over it was a bit windy last night i don't think we bought too much stuff like we bought the right stuff for the weather we've got a little lemon ginger and manuka honey tea this uh, adventure food Nusper muesli it's got like banana chips and cranberries in it I've had it a few times before it's pretty nice Dawn's had a protein cookie and a cup of coffee I'm gonna have uh, another of my favorite protein bars as well today we are going on the Adnams brewery tour up at uh, I think it's up at Soul Bay in Southwold. That starts at 12 midday. Uh, before that, we're going to explore some of the town, and I want to like check out some stuff like Gun Hill and the lighthouse and whatnot. Uh, I don't know if the pier is going to be open this early, but if it is, we'll go and have a walk on that. So after we've done the brewery tour, we're then hoping to make some more ground and cross over the Blythe Estuary into Walberswick hopefully get to Dunwich by tonight find somewhere around there maybe to camp um, it's a lot of shingle there a pub there there's water taps there's public toilets there's a beach calf and then the day after that we'll be exploring Dunwich because there's once again loads to see in Dunwich so yeah these interesting towns are holding us up at the moment we can't just bypass them you, you, we've got to, we've got to explore them you know it's a world for history there so that's the plan we're going to get eating and then get the tent packed away So we've barely walked 20 metres <laughs> and we found the nearby Gun Hill beach cath thing here at Southwold. So I've got a bacon and sausage roll, uh, a piece of Gun Hill Victoria sponge, homemade, an apple juice. Dawn's got a bacon roll yep. and a latte. Yep. I just dropped some Pro Plus. <laughs> Anyways, lovely. And then we're going to go and have a look around like Gun Hill and the rest of Southwold, check out the lighthouse, and then eventually the brewery tour. Southwold, with its old fashioned genteel atmosphere, is considered by many to be one of the most charming coastal towns in all England. It received the town charter from Henry VII in 1489 
but virtually all of the town's original buildings were destroyed in a fire in 1659 and a consequence of this was to leave open areas known as greens as fire breaks in the subsequent rebuild. Today, Southwold's most notable sites are its pier, dating from 1900, but fully restored and reopened in 2001. A white lighthouse dating from 1887 that stands in the centre of the town. The Adnams Soul Bay Brewery and the imposing 15th century St Edmund's Church with its exquisite roof that holds numerous wooden angel figures. The colourful beach huts that line the promenade are another of the town's most iconic sites. These come at a hefty asking price, as does any real estate in this. One of the most expensive of Suffolk towns. We're currently in the heart of Southwold and the Adnams Brewery District. It's like um, it's almost like a little community within itself, within Southwold, all the Adnams buildings and factories and whatnot. So we're just trying to find the the tour. It's really cool though, and you can you can start to smell it now as well. It's a lovely smell, and I don't even drink beer. <laughs> we're going to get to taste some beers today. Hopefully, some their cider as well. That should be good. So yeah, I hope you're looking forward to this. <laughs> Sit back, relax, crack a beer open or a cider. Be testing some beers out now. <laughs> Everyone's looking forward to that. Ooh, taking some home. <laughs> <Routine bottle. laughs> it's been an absolutely brilliant tour yeah, so yeah. far. So yeah, now we get to taste some beers and whatnot. So grab yourselves a seat, where you comfy. Yes, we make full strength ghost ship. This is then forced through a reverse osmosis filter. But compare it to the other things you can drink when you're driving and all of a sudden it's fantastic. Compare it to orange juice and lemonade or Coca-Cola or a mug full of shonky pub coffee and all of a sudden it's fantastic. Cheers everyone. Oh, cheers. cheers. That's nice. That's not bad, is it? Is there any difference in the taste between cans? This is a ghost ship. Not really. 0.5% um, low alcohol. 
I didn't used to drink canned beer. Uh, for a long time, I wouldn't drink Very canned nice. beer. And I'd started working for Adams here, and we had a product familiarisation event. There's obviously another word for that. And somebody handed me a can of mosaic, and I said, oh, here's the bit that I don't like, the flowery bit. What I do get is bergamot, that almost fat citrus flavour you get from the This one is it, an old grey lager. Now, the order we're doing these in, you shouldn't need to rinse your glasses between, but if you do want to, your glasses nice. at the back there, but we're doing it in an order where the flavours should get stronger and sort of more prevalent as we go through. That's 5%. That's really nice. This is the Adams Lighthouse. I think it's 3.4%. <laughs> um, yeah, stronger. Easy drinking, quite simple. That lovely clean malt flavour to it. Um, I'd agree with that. We've been making this for yeah, over the old grey. A very long time, 130 years we've been making this beer. Yeah, I prefer that. This one's South Hall bitter. Quite difficult to look after. Beers require more looking after. The more hops you've got, the easier it is to look after beer because the bittering of them will overcome a lot of our flavours. Um, in 3.7, easy drinking, all day long. So that's what the story is. This is the world famous ghost ship. Um, very citrusy. Much export, it's taken over the world. That's Social nice. Media. That's yeah. really refreshing. San Francisco, Tokyo, that's what my favourite it? one. It's very nice of them, to be honest. I'm not that bothered. I've got mm. a key to the brewery in my pocket. I'm drinking. But it really has changed. Very citrusy. Sort of. So this one is broadside. 4.7%. Layers of flavour, layers of fruit cake, a little bit plummy, a little bit cherry, lots of sort of tartar sweetness in there. I absolutely adore this beer. It's a great cooking beer as well. If you're making a steak and ale pie or a sausage casserole, works really well as a cooking beer. And the bottled one, being a bit stronger and sweeter, is a fantastic beer to have with cheeses. It's like having a chutney you can drink with your cheeses. It's absolutely fantastic. Oh, it's better than that other one we had at first. Well. Still can't drink a lot of it though. I feel a little bit lost. We, think oh, that. Yeah, we only had a few little <laughs> sips, but I'm like, oh, I don't drink beer, as you know. Barry, absolutely brilliant tour guide. I highly recommend you have a tour of Adnams here. Awesome. Absolutely brilliant tour, wasn't it? And we've got a voucher each as well to go to the shop and claim something gratis or if you buy a big case of something I think he said you get 10% off towards it because of that oh there was that old couple in there that have gone back for seconds and he filled the glass right up and he was like we have to be quick though um, Barry said and he just filled the glass right up and I thought you're an old pisshead mate like he was asking all sorts of questions bless him he was like a proper proper beer nerd and you can tell he just loves getting on it and then she went up and got more as well she went oh can I try some of that as oh, well the draft stuff, they? they're on the draft now he's gonna have a job getting rid of them too <laughs> so we just caught up with Barry the tour guide after I asked him are there any plans to bring out any more ciders from Adams because they only do the wild wave original cider and he said yeah there's gonna be there's going to be a, a blush cider I think they've bought out and it's gone down really well that sounds epic so we are going to go and try and find the Ad, uh, the Adnam shop and use our vouchers and maybe try and get like a I don't know, maybe a can of blush and a can of wild wave original and then they will be the drinks we'll be trying out in camp tonight we have found the mecca of Adnams we have found the shop Excellent. Let's go spend our vouchers. Oh. So we just left the Adnams shop. We got a can of the new Wild Wave Blush Cider. We're trying that later on. I cannot wait. Then they do uh, a low alcohol one, a 0.5%. Got to review it. Even though some of you are like, that's heathenism, low alcohol. We've got the classic original one, 
then don't know if I'm going to give this to my mum or whether we're going to drink it but we've got their award winning Copper House uh, gin gin and tonic they do and apparently it was voted the best gin in the world wasn't it yeah. ever and they were really really proud of that and then I, I got us a couple of little like the smallest teal mugs ever because we can't get anything that's too big because we can't carry all of this stuff so just something diddy like that so and you can have one of those Dawn that's a memento <laughs> a memory of our uh, of our shenanigans in South I've got the taste of the beer in my mouth so have I so have I I'm glad you said that and all yeah I, I feel oh. absolutely rotten well, I think we need a pasty no, I just need a cider, I think, definitely. I need something sweet. So do I. Not the most scenic view I know. We've got a bin and a skip here in Southwold. I probably picked the least scenic bit of the whole town. But we are sat outside, well, round the back of the Soul Bay Inn. A cracking little pub. And we've actually got some of the Wild Wave blush cider that Adnams do. Mm. I just couldn't resist getting us um, a can of that each. Dawn's just tried a bit and she said it was really, really nice. Mm. Oh, that is nice. That's so good. I think it's mainly also because we just drunk a load of beer and ales and stuff. Oh, that is nice. And it's like really sweet, but mm. what would you give it out of 10? This is my favourite. I thought Blood Orange was, but this is nice. Older Thatcher's Blood Orange. Mm. That is good. A nine. A nine out of mm. 10. That is nice. I think I'm going to have to agree, I'd give that a 9 out of 10 as well. But, like I say, I think our judgement is slightly biased because we just had a load of beer that was really bitter. And I remember we were halfway through the, uh, the beer testings and I was like, I just want something sweet like a cider <laughs> now. You don't realise how sweet cider is until you've tried all those beers and stuff. Mm. So, we're going to have these and then we're going to get walking. <laughs> so we left the Soul Bay in and we are now starting section 3 of the Suffolk Coast Path according to the guidebook which in case you're wondering is the Cicerone uh, Suffolk Coast Path uh, it covers the Sandlings Walk and the Store and Orwell Walk which are two other very good Suffolk based long distance routes so stage three of the Coast Path is six and a half miles Sorry, it's south of the Dunwich, I should have mentioned. So it should get us into Dunwich for about six, half six at a push because I'm filming. Below us is all the, the beach huts of Southwold. So next time you will see us, we will be at the River Bride Estuary crossing over there into Walberswick. Stage three, Southwold to Dunwich. This walk has plenty of variety. The genteel seaside delights of Southwold with its pier, lighthouse, promenade and splendid pubs. The more workaday charms of the Blythe Estuary with its fishing huts and boat piers. Walberswick, a long gentrified fishing village. And Dunwich, once a large important port but now almost completely lost to the North Sea. The coastal path continues northwest along the right bank of the Blythe Estuary. It is a picturesque ramshackle area with lots of boat centred activity, landings and miscellaneous nautical fixtures and fittings. There are several huts selling excellent fresh fish along here, as well as a sit down fish and chip shop, a tea room and just before the Bailey Bridge, the Harbour Inn pub. So we have arrived in Walberswick, which is the other side of the Blythe. I've wild camped here a couple of times before, on the beach, not far away. One of them was in a really bad storm. Walberswick was an important trading port between the 13th and early 20th centuries. At first a rival to, and then taking over from Dunwich, when that port was lost due to silting at the end of the 13th century.
Around the close of the 19th century, the village was chosen as an artistic base by the English Impressionists, led by Philip Wilson Steer and the Scottish architect Charles Rennie Mackintosh, also came here to live and paint watercolours in 1914. The artistic tradition lives on with a number of luminaries of British cultural life owning holiday homes in and around the village. It's quarter to six and after a lot of tough hard going walking on the shingle all the way from uh, Wolberswick we have arrived, well more or less arrived at Dunwich which is about half a mile, maybe less than that from where we are now. Uh, so around about this spot I have camped here before <laughs> uh, at least once. Dunwich is a really interesting place, one of the most interesting villages on the Suffolk coast. So at one point it was one of the largest ports in the country. It rivaled like Dover, places like that. Uh, but after like a series of really violent storms, I think sometime in the Middle Ages, it washed away huge chunks of the, the town. It had a harbour, it had its own mint. It sent people to Parliament, it built warships for the King here, uh, everything. It was really important and really prosperous and now there's hardly anything left of it. There's a few ruins and stuff. It once had, I believe, six churches and pretty much all of them fell into the sea due to the coastal erosion and just storms battering this part of the coast. And now there's only one more church left and it's quite far inland and there's ruins of a leper chapel, like a leper hospital for people suffering from leprosy and they were treated there and lived there. So we'll try and get to see that. There's a really good beach cafe here next to the car park and they do good food, drinks, souvenirs, all that sort of stuff. Uh, yeah, big car park, there's public toilets that are open all the time, so that's quite useful. The ruins of Greyfriars, uh, it's either a, not a chapel, I think it's a monastery or something, up on the cliffs. And there's a, a gravestone up there in the woods, right on the cliff edge, and it's the last grave of the graveyard from the church one of the churches that fell into the sea and there's some really cool dramatic photos that you can see the old black and white photos of the church ruins just gradually disappearing as they go over the cliff edge supposedly you can hear the bells tolling under the water at night of the churches that vanished and of course someone come up with a theory well actually the waves could cause the bells to toll so they sent like underwater archaeologists down there a few times and they've recovered bits of like the lost city as it were the lost harbour and stuff bits of stonework and things the, the town went really far out to the sea the coastline has changed so much here there's a really good museum in Dunwich it's free of, it's free to enter and it tells you all about the history of Dunwich and what happened to it and they've got like a big sort of model of showing like the Roman coastline, the medieval coastline, the current coastline, you can just see how much has disappeared, it's fascinating. Yeah, so once again if you're doing a coast path or if you're up this way and you like history, you've got to check Dunwich out. It's absolutely brilliant here. Yeah, that was hard going, my feet are hurting after that shingle walk, but we've done it. But look after our feet tonight as well, check for blisters and hot spots and whatnot. Yeah, good to be at Dunwich. So, that's the end of stage 
three. Nice to sit down and rest. So Dawn is heading off to the the car park at Dunwich, the beach car park, because I think there's a tap there, or at least there's of course taps in the toilets. And she's going to fill up our four Nalgene water bottles for tonight. And we've decided we're going to just pitch up here on the shingle. Um, it's far enough away from the boats and the car park and the village itself. Um, it's going to be a little bit breezy up here, but the tent should hold fine. Um, I didn't really want to go down there particularly. Uh, I thought it would be nice just to have this view in the morning. So yeah, we're going to pitch up here. I'm going to start setting the tent up while she gets the water. And we're going to eat into our food that we've been carrying in our rucksacks and have snacks and whatnot because it's weighing us down. So uh, no pub dinner tonight, no drinks in the pub because we've got all of the booze from Adnams, of course. So yeah, it'd be nice to sort of stop early, chill out, relax, rest our feet. We've got the tent set up, up on the shingle bank, just outside of Dunwich. It's probably a quarter of a mile, if that, really. So we're going to be seeing Dunwich tomorrow. Dawn has kindly gone and collected all the water. We've got four litres, so that's plenty to cook with, and of course to make drinks with. For this trip, the Suffolk Coast Path, I decided to go with adventure foods dehydrated meals uh, they've always been really reliable for me I'm not sponsored by them or anything so I'm not trying to plug them or anything I just think they're they're really good and they're pretty good value for money and they're pretty lightweight and as you can say a nice as you can see a very slim thin profile so uh, we bought three I think three days worth so we bought uh, three desserts, three dinners, and three breakfasts each. And then we had another breakfast, and we had this campers, uh, campers pantry Moroccan pork, which Jason, a subscriber, J and J Explore, good little YouTube channel, he sent me this one ages ago, and I've still not got around to to trying it. So we're going to try that at some point on this trip. So we've got that as well. We've got loads of snack bars, protein bars, uh, drink mixes so we can keep hydrated, teas, coffees, hot chocolates, all that sort of jazz. So, for dinner tonight, from our, us, our limited menu, I chose the chicken curry, adventure foods, and the vanilla dessert, which is amazing. For breakfast, I've got the expedition breakfast. Dawn has chosen tonight the pasta bolognese, the chocolate mousse, and then she's also got the expedition breakfast for the morning as well. We'll probably get up early tomorrow morning because we're going to get a really good sunrise from here coming out of the sea and stuff. We'll get the tent back down, we'll walk into Dunwich have a look around Dunwich and film there and show you all of that, tell you about the history there and then we're going to press on past Dunwich Heath which is uh, the National Trust owned site where the Coast Guard cottages are and stuff are we want to get to Sizewell at least tomorrow which should be doable and then past Sizewell I know there's a really good spot uh, between Sizewell and Thorpe Ness so that could be our next camp spot, don't know yet, we'll see so anyways we're going to get cooking some food because we're starving there's a little bit of rain in the air a few light spots of rain so we've got the tent set up pretty quick so if need be we can sit in the tent out of the rain and have dinner which will be quite nice so the first cider from Adnams that we're trying tonight is Adnams Wild Wave English Cider this is the original flavour it's 5% a splash in the face with a wild wave of flavours, refreshing, surprising and delicious. Serve at North Sea temperatures. <laughs> so we've each got a 
little Adnam Southwold mug. These things are tiny, by the way. They're literally like miniature teacups. So, uh, yeah, cheers. Mm. Cheers. It's good, isn't it? Mm. It definitely tastes stronger than the blush. Um, only a bit, but as original ciders go, original flavours, I, nice. I like it, yeah. It's not quite at North Sea temperatures, though. It's a little bit warm. What would you give it out of 10, Dawn? Seven out of ten. Yeah, it's quite good. Oh, seven and a half. It's nice. Seven and a half. That's nice. Seven and a half, quite, did you yeah, say? Yeah, it's quite warming actually. That's nice. I'd say a seven and a half as well. Yeah. I, was, I was going to go a little bit higher than you. Yeah, definitely. Of course you would. Pretty nice. For an original, that's nice. Definitely, yeah. So, yeah, we're just going to be sharing these tonight. Do you want a little bit more? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no hesitation. You hardly drunk any of it. Yeah, I'm having the last bit. <laughs> These cups are quite good actually for like sharing a 330ml can. Our dinner should be just about ready. By now it's been rehydrating a little while. So the dehydrated meals have been rehydrating for probably about 10 minutes now. So what I did was once we poured the water in, stirred it round, sealed them back up and then wrapped them in our down jackets and it just stops them from cooling down before they have a chance to rehydrate. Otherwise, you're left with a lot of crunchy bits, I find. Sometimes it works, sometimes it don't, but they've stayed really warm inside the down jackets. Dawn's got the pasta bolognese. Verdict? Very nice. Soft. Very nice. You're just hungry, aren't you, really? You I eat am. anything. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's fair enough. No, it is nice. Um, the chicken curry. I mean, I've had both of these before. I can't remember what the chicken curry's like, though, to be honest. It looks very dry. The thing I like about these is it actually tastes like what it's meant to be. It doesn't taste like artificial or anything. This does actually taste like a chicken curry. Oh, <laughs> is that a fart? <laughs> awesome. That's a sign of a good meal. <laughs> we had our desserts, the chocolate mousse and the vanilla dessert, both very nice. We had that other bottle of Aspel Draft Cider. Glad to get rid of that because that was quite a weight to carry. So we looked at the book and yeah, this is the guidebook. Really good guidebook, I highly recommend it. Cicerone do do some good guidebooks. Once again, not sponsored by them. I just highly recommend them, that's all. So we've done three stages so far out of eight. <laughs> Let's say today was a bit of an easy, easy day for us really because we had the the brewery tour at Adnams, which was brilliant. So stage four tomorrow is Dunwich to Thorpness, and that is eight miles. So after Sizewell, there's a nice little spot where I think that's probably where we're going to wild camp, and it's it's just before Thorpness. It's more or less Thorpness. Nice isolated little spot, and then yeah, after that, we'll be on to Aldborough, and then we'll start heading inland. So, we've still got quite a way to go. We've done so far, we've done about 20 miles, just short of 20 miles. So, Dawn's really proud of herself. Done well, haven't you? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's tired, but we're, it's been a bit more of a relaxing evening. That's the end of part two. You'll see more in part three tomorrow morning. So we're going to hit the hay soon. Enough yawning. And I'll see you in the morning. Night again, everyone. Say like night, Dawn. Oh, good oh. night. Night. Sorry. <laughs> night. Sorry. <laughs>